Hello friends, my name is Marines and today I have a Q&A for you. In true booktube tradition, this Q&A is brought to you by a subscriber milestone. This past week I hit 10,000 subscribers on this channel. I went in on a whole thread on Twitter about this, but I am so so grateful for each and every one of you guys who have hit that subscribe button. I'm so thankful for this community and everyone who spends time watching my videos or especially commenting, engaging in community. I put a lot of work into my channel and I really try to make sure that when I bring you guys content that it's thoughtful. And as somebody who juggles a lot in her life, I've always enjoyed investing time and energy into this space. So more than a number really, I am just thankful that people are watching and are engaging and hopefully that they're enjoying what they find here. So again, thank you for 10,000 subscribers. I am over the moon. I asked on Twitter for questions. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter, you should because I always ask for suggestions and questions and kind of engagement volunteers for projects over there. So a little plug for my Twitter, but follow me on Twitter. That's where I ask for questions for this Q&A and I'm going to answer as many of them as I can. Uh, I say that knowing that I don't want this video too long and I spent like I don't know how many minutes <laughs> introing this video, so let's get to it. What challenge in organizing a convention was the biggest surprise to you? Sam and I talked about this during our keynote last year. Organizing this convention has been a wild ride, especially as we're going into the second year. The ways that that has made things a lot easier because we kind of know everything that we need to do, but trying to keep it fresh and introduce new things. And then also I feel like Sam is way busier this year than she I think I am too. I'm not Sure. I don't know if it just feels that way because we're in the middle of it. I know that Sam is like way busier this year than she was last year. So juggling all of that has definitely been a challenge. But I think the biggest challenge for both Sam and I, the time management thing, I think we're both very good at and we're doing our best and we work like in, in stops and goes. Like when we have the time, we are cranking things out. We're very good at passing things back and forth to whoever is available. We've got Caitlin on our team this year, so that's been great. So while that is a challenge, I think we handle that very well. The biggest surprise challenge to me was all of the ways that we had to manage being introverts <laughs> as we're kind of organizing this thing. It was so funny the way that we we, like jumped in like we just jumped into planning this thing and then we were like oh but we're like bad at talking on the phone or like cold calling people and so there were things that we it was like you know of all of the millions of tasks that we had these things became the most dreaded because we're just like not good at them so that was definitely a surprise to see the way that this like highlighted my introvert side in a lot of ways. What project on the spreadsheet of dreams do you personally want to happen most? So for those of you guys that don't know, Sweeney and I keep something that we call the spreadsheet of dreams and this is where we go and we put in what we want to cover on the snark squad. I, I honestly have not visited this spreadsheet in a little while just because you know like no time and lately if I want to cover something I'm just like eh, I'm gonna cover it and I start it and that's how we have so many like half done projects but that's neither here nor there. So we started this thing called the spreadsheet of dreams where we put down all of the books and like TV shows that we eventually wanted to talk about or recap or review in a lot of ways having the podcast changes things because recapping a TV show is hours and hours and hours of investment like one recap can take me three to four hours if it's like Game of Thrones it can take like five so it, it's very time intensive to write these recaps with the podcast we're able to consume chunks of media and then just talk about it on the podcast and we're really it's like one thing a week so we're really speeding through the media that we want to get to because of the podcast that said there are things on the spreadsheet that I would still love to recap Battlestar Galactic goes on there and I've never watched the TV show and I would love to recap it. Xena Warrior Princess is on there and I watched the crap out of this show when I was younger and I don't know I just feel like we would have a grand old time recapping that and of course one of my favorite TV shows from when I was younger is Lois and Clark The New Adventures of Superman. We talk about this all of the time because we are currently recapping Supergirl and so we there are a lot of nods obviously like Dean Cain's on there, Terry Hatcher. So we're always talking about Lois and Clark and 
and I promise you guys when we are done with Supergirl I am totally recapping that show it's gonna happen what made you enter and follow the human resources career track I've always wanted to do a video about this but it's kind of something that I am not shy about yeah a little bit shy you know it's just something that's super personal that I, I've never talked about but my whole like education has been kind of non-traditional when I got out of high school I thought that I wanted to do a science thing and I majored in biology pre-pharmacy and I ended up doing that for four years and when it was time to go into pharmacy school I had like a, a come to Jesus with myself and I realized that I hated it I was it was not a good time for me I was not healthy I was stressing myself out a lot I didn't know how to break it to my parents that I didn't want to do this thing that I invested four years into and I was just making myself very very sick I talked to my aunt about it at the time and she just kind of spoke some sense into me and she was like your parents are really amazing and awesome and they're gonna be fine with it if you're just honest with them like you need to stop I was making like other bad decisions to avoid this whole thing and dealing with it so she she was a great counsel at that time and I ended up quitting school after those four years even without a degree because it was like a pre-pharmacy thing and you were supposed to go through eight six or eight years to do the entire thing so I just had like four years no degree and then this biology field that I really didn't want to do anything with because I didn't want to be I didn't want to go to medical school like I was done with science after that whole thing I just decided that I was going to take a break from school and start working I'd been working through college I worked at the school newspaper as an editor and then I started working at a call center but that lasted a little while because they switched me into being an executive assistant for the VP of marketing so I was doing a lot of proofreading and uh, copy editing I was managing their catalog and writing for their newsletter so I was doing a lot of these things that I was really enjoying I lasted three or four years in that job as an executive assistant then I ended up working for a college as an executive assistant to the director of operations so it was a more operational versus a marketing role and then from that job I moved into an, a straight operations role because the opportunity presented itself and it's something that I had been kind of doing in the in-between so I was an operations for like an operations coordinator at this new job and that lasted a few months before before, after they hired me they called me and said actually we're getting rid of the operations department entirely and they're being absorbed in other departments but we really like you we still want you to have a job we have a human resources coordinator open and available and at that point I wasn't like really going to school I hadn't figured out what I wanted to do yet and I needed a job so I was like okay like if you're gonna give me a job I'm just gonna take it at this point and they switched me over into the human resources department and I fell in love I loved it I love the balance of it I love that it can be very operational I love that I have this people interaction in doses throughout the day I love that there can be some creativity as we're doing recruiting strategies and we're thinking up different things and managing events for the employees and just trying to make it like a really inviting and fun place to work and so I really really lucked into my career and it's been six years now that I've been in HR I'm an HR generalist now and I'm still loving it and every new thing that I start and I end up doing in this new job I started recruiting so I've been here for two two years now and I really am loving the recruiting aspect of it so it hasn't disappointed me yet I did eventually go back to school and I got my bachelor's but I did it in communications so <laughs> I'm all over the place really with my interest and whatnot but HR has been working out great did you buy all of the Stephanie Myers and E.L. James books to start through them if so did you burn them after so I didn't buy any of those books for myself I was rechecking them out from the library constantly it's so embarrassing so embarrassing every time I had to be like renew 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 but no I didn't buy them what are some of your top tier ultimate dreams for book net fest we have so many so I think that our ultimate vision for book net Inc which is like the nonprofit organization that we established that puts on book net fest is to have it be like a larger presence in the community there are so many things that we'd love to do so many things that we would love to organize within the community that aren't all focused on the event though the event is obviously like a main attraction of what we're putting on so I think that as we go through the years and we get kind of the event 
down pat, you know, like then we'll be able to introduce these other things that we want to introduce to the community. We're doing Twitter chats this year leading up to the event that everybody can participate in. And for the event itself, I think that we have so many ideas of how to make it a very customized experience for people within the community. Like we want to do panels and workshops and meetups and we, we have all of these ideas of getting people together and getting people out of their comfort zone but also helping people do it in a comfortable way. So um, yeah, I just think that, and we're, we're already introducing little pieces of that as we go. It's just going to be a matter of growing the event in terms of attendance and in terms of sponsorships and just making sure that this is on people's radar that this is happening and that people will be interested in coming and to support us. We're up against a lot of big name events out there and we know that people want to go to like the BEAs and the Y'all Fests, you know, because they have the big names of people out there. But I I think that what we do at BookNefest is so unique. And I think that until people experience it, they don't really get how our event compares to others because I think it, it's a very, it's not an author event, it's not an industry event it's an event for us people who love books and storytelling so yeah I don't know <laughs> that isn't that kind of wandered off the question was like what I want to do hopefully the answer wasn't there somewhere <laughs> and then they say lastly teach me your lip color ways so um, Sam from thoughts on tones does this thing where she always puts her lip color down in the description I always think like ah, I should steal that but my lip color collection is probably not as varied as her I, I do have a lot, but I end up going to like the same three, four, or five lip colors all of the time. This is a 1995 by Gerard Cosmetics. I didn't start wearing lipstick until my mid to late 20s. I had always heard the conventional wisdom that people with fuller lips shouldn't wear bright colors or can't wear bright colors. At some point I was like, I don't care, I wanna try, and started with red lipsticks. And my favorite nows are any kind of berries and pinks, anything with a purple hue or tinge to it is like mine. So favorite book you've read this year, worst book you've read this year, and favorite review you've done this year. I talked a little bit about this in my mid-year book freakout tag but favorite book so far this year has been The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. Worst book that I read this year, I can't remember what I said in that video but it's probably Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Meyer. I think I said that that's the book that I went into knowing that I was going to hate it and was also the worst. The book that I thought I would enjoy but was actually the worst was A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Brain. And my favorite review that I've done this year, I mentioned in that video, the recaps for Breaking Dawn which are hilarious and if you want to experience our pain as we as critical adults make our way through the Twilight series you can find those on Snark Squad. What's the most awkward story of someone telling you they watch your videos? Oh man, anytime anybody tells me that they watch their my videos, it's like the most awkward thing that's ever happened to me. The most recent was I was pulling out of my parking spot at church and like driving carefully to get out because there's people all over the place and kids and whatnot. So I'm like going slow and I see somebody like running towards me. Somebody I grew up with, like I know who he is. We've been going to the same church since we were both like preteen. So I see him like running towards me and he's like waving me down and I'm like, hey. But I realize that he like is not just saying hi, he wants to say something. To me so I roll down the window and he's like hey guess what and so I have no idea where this is going at all so I'm like hey uh, what's up and so he says the other day I was on YouTube and I was searching to see if anybody had reviewed Ready Player One the movie and the on the first page of results was your face and you were reviewing the book and I was, I don't know what my face looked like at that moment. I know that I said like, oh, thank you. And I kind of laughed it off. It was super weird. I'm sure that I was horribly awkward. He was being very nice about it. He said that it was super cool and all of that, but yeah. What is your guilty pleasure food? Oof, I'm such a chocoholic. I have such a bad sweet tooth. If I could eat sweets for like every meal of the day, I would. I get it from my mother's side of the family. We all love desserts and love chocolate. I I just love chocolate so much. What's the most expensive book that you own? It's not one book, but it's this collection of His Dark Material books. They are the Folio Society ones. So they cost me like upwards of $200. 
Um, so yeah, I bought them when I was living at home and I was making a professional salary and I wasn't paying very many bills. So I had extra income to kind of splurge on these. I'm so very happy that I own them. They are absolutely gorgeous and I always go on Folio Society now and I just look at all of the things that I can no longer afford right now. They have these beautiful Austin editions that I'm just, ugh, I'm in love with. I want to own them one day. Anything Folio Society is basically an A plus. So I think that these are the most expensive ones I own. Apart from my drop caps, I should have mentioned those. These are super expensive. They're like $22 each, I think, and it's all 26 letters of the alphabet. However, I bought them used on Amazon. I got super lucky because they were listed by a seller as like new and they came really, really new. So they're gorgeous. I love them. And I think they might have been about the same price, but there's way more of those. So these are still probably the more expensive ones. Does your family think it's awesome all of the stuff that you have accomplished in regards to your channel, podcast, job, school, and creation of BookNetFest? My parents are always super proud of me. They're really excellent, wonderful people. I don't know how much they know about what I do as kind of like a hobby. I don't talk about these things to many people in my day-to-day -day life, like at work and uh, between my sisters know that I have a channel, but we don't really talk about it often. I just, when I started doing things online, I started with blogging and I was blogging anonymously. And it's always been a way to make me feel, to have the courage to do what I'm doing. I can be kind of shy especially about the things that I'm making so I started doing that anonymously and so I just got into the habit of not talking to people so much about this as a hobby I'm I don't know it's very very weird I'm not embarrassed of the things that I make and if it comes up I'm not gonna hide it as I mentioned I just kind of move along I do get very shy about these things and I always especially when people tell me that I'm different here than I am on my day-to-day -day life it always like mortifies me a little bit especially because I, I try to be my most authentic self but it's different having a conversation with somebody at work versus like standing here and talking to myself or working off a script of something that I was specific that I want to tell you guys a review or whatnot so those kinds of things are just super kind of embarrassing for me I'm easily embarrassed so I've worked around that in order to make these things by just kind of like not mentioning it and it, it, the like up and the give and take of it is that like maybe people don't know that I'm achieving things that I'm super proud of and I'm making things that I'm super proud of but it, it works okay for me for the time being and I know that there's eventually gonna be a time where it's gonna like you know I'm gonna have to talk about it or it's gonna come to a head or somebody's gonna find me on YouTube or whatnot but yeah what's your all-time favorite friendship from a book again terrible at all-time favorites especially because I'm kind of just reading this and thinking off the top of my head as I'm doing these answers like I didn't script any of this out so I, it's hard for me to think right off the top of my head but I can think of some hopefully I don't forget any that mean super a lot to me I love Will and Lyra from His Dark Materials which I just showed you guys I love A through L and September and Saturday in the Fairyland series by Catherine and Valenti a more recent favorite is June and Hannah from A Million Junes by Emily Henry if you guys love reading about friendship I think that this is a great one to pick up it has a female friendship at the heart of it and it talks a little bit about growing up and what like the grief process that you can kind of go through as you're growing up and like the the fear of growing apart from your friends. What inspired you to be part of Snark Squad? You were already part of it when I found you and followed and subscribed so I don't know the story behind your involvement. That's a great question it reminds me that I talk about Snark Squad all the time here but I always get people that like don't realize that that I'm part of this or don't realize what a big project it is for me so yes I actually founded Snark Squad in 2011 it was me and my friend Sarah came up with this idea to go back and start reading the books that we loved as children and recapping them and kind of bringing our adult perspective to these books and so we invited some more friends Nicole and Lana was at the time recapping with us and we were just 
going back and reading Sweet Valley High, Babysitter's Club, the Goosebumps books, and the Boxcar Children, and every book we had a recap dedicated to it. So that's kind of how it started, and then we involved more of our friends, and then it evolved to include recapping television, then we picked up Fifty Shades of Grey, and then it just became this thing, like our vehicle for recapping any and all media that we were interested in. When I started Snark Squad, I was still blogging anonymously. I started blogging personally in 2009. Snark Squad started in 2011. And so if you see the name Lorraine around the site, that's just the pen name that I was using when I started this project. It's so weird for me to think about now, but you know, whatever. It was, it is what it is. So I, Lorraine is me under a pen name. So yeah, Snark Squad is my baby. Nicole and I run it together now. Um, she does a lot more of like the podcast editing and she helps out here and there in recaps, but I'm the main recapper and then I'm also organizing all of the writers and all of that stuff. In honor of the theme of Book Net Fest this year being unintentionally about BFFs, how did you and Sweeney Says meet and start creating things together? So we're joking that Book Net Fest's unintentional theme is best friends because this year Sam gets to meet Sarah Jane and their long distance best friends and if you followed any of that on, on Twitter and through their Kickstarter or whatnot, their GoFundMe, then you guys know how excited they are to meet in person and I'm just excited for them. Like I'm excited to witness <laughs> any and all of them being together in a room. And then Nicole Sweeney, my best friend, is also going to be at Book Death Fest this year. Nicole and I originally met because of our blogging. There was this website called 20 Something Bloggers in which I, I found it because I was looking for ways to meet other bloggers and connect with other people, find other blogs, and grow my blog in 2009. And so I came across this 20-something bloggers which had a forum element of it. And we, I don't remember specifically, but I know that I met Nicole through there. And I went from like engaging on the forum, me reading her blog, her reading my blog. They also had a chat room and we would like chat back and forth in there. I remember one time she sent me a blog to like read and give her like edits and feedback on, which was the first time we were, I don't know, in my, in my memory that I was like, oh, this is so cool. Like we were like taking that friendship kind of aside from 20 as being, I think, I don't, I can't even remember like the sequence of events now, but 20 something bloggers had an event one year it only happened one time and it was like a, a kind of like book net fest would be for us now in the reading community but specifically for bloggers and it was in Chicago and Nicole and I met in person for the first time there if I recall correctly and when we started Snark Squad I reached out to her to participate in this project and obviously that has been going on since 2011 she invited me to go with her to Coachella one year and join her family and I was like sure and so I think that's also a milestone in us becoming like best friends so yeah it started online because of our blogs it grew because of snark squad and especially because of travel and we've been we've been to a number of places together one of my favorite things is just getting to see her a few times every year in a city not our own meet up somewhere else and just have adventures together and that's it that's pretty much all of the questions that I received I promised you guys last time that I did a Q&A that I would keep these a little more regular I love answering any questions that you guys might have about any and all of the projects that I'm doing. If there is ever anything you guys want to ask me about BookNet Fest, BookTubing, Snark Squad, HR apparently, <laughs> or myself, anything that I can answer or help you guys with, feel free to ask me down in the comments over on Twitter and I'll start compiling for Q&A part three. And reading, you can ask me questions about reading obviously. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. What does Ernest Klein write? Say our motto, but that's not the one. Jeez, um.